Okay. Let's see. How's everybody doing? I am fully aware that over on Hyper there are very silly things happening. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how, how many people are going to be tuning in over here today. Um, but that that is okay. Everybody needs to put out awesome content and we're all giving it our best shot. So I have this monstrosity to open today and take a look at. Hello, hello, welcome. But before I do that, I'll, I'll, I'll give a few minutes to let people, some people filter in before I get to, uh, to this thing. But this is not the first Warhammer toy. Uh, it's, it's among like the first five, but it's, it's not the first. And so let's take a look at some of the other things. So now I do not have, so the first action figure, which is actually same scale, pretty much the same size as this one, uh, comes from Japan. And that was the Bandai. Hey Zardoz, welcome. So yeah, I do not have a Bandai Space Marine Intercessor action figure uh, because those are $100. And that's, I mean, hey, look, there are certainly reasons why you would buy a $100 action figure um, for the detail and everything else. I very rarely spend that much on an action figure. For all the things I have, for all the toys I have, <laughs> I don't I don't often spend that much on a single a single piece. But there is the Bandai version. Now Bandai also came out with with these little chibi guys that don't get a lot of attention, even though they're freaking adorable and great. So we have an Ultramarines Intercessor. Sister of Battle. And they're super cute. Obviously they're chibi uh, SD style. Although I'm I'm really surprised somebody hasn't come up with a better a better term for that that's caught on. Uh, paint where there is paint detail, they're not bad. Like those eyes are pretty good. But obviously there's a lot, a lot going on here that's not painted. Uh, some people in the hobby especially have repainted these to unbelievable effect, as you might imagine. We have a gray knight. Arsenal Roy, that, that is a good point. We definitely could use these, yeah. And yeah, so these come blind ba blind packaged, but um, they're they're not very expensive. You can get a set of these on eBay and such. But yeah, they're cute. Eversaur Assassin. And then you got a little uh, Adeptus Mechanicus guy here. Yeah, so these came out, these are from Bandai in Japan. They came out alongside the uh, the big old Bandai Intercessor. So these are out there in the world. Uh, there were rumors that these might come out unpainted as well, but so far they have not. Um, but like I said, I've seen people just basically paint right over these things. Or, you know, or prime them and repaint them, you know, however, however, however they need to do it. Um, also, it's worth mentioning that there are four... Warhammer 40k Funko Pops. Five if you if you count that they did release this one unpainted. So eh, technically a fifth. So there's an Ultramarines Intercessor. Uh, there's a Dark Angel. There's a Space Wolf. And a Blood Angel Assault Marine. Hey, Erdensk. So cute. This is the only one. Uh, at one point I had several of them. Uh, this is the only one I kept. I gave the other ones away. If I had gotten the unpainted ones, I probably would have. Yeah. yeah it's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. But the big thing that we're looking at today. Is this fella. All right. So this is from McFarland Toys. And again, this was a surprise announcement at Toy Fair back in February of this year. Uh they announced it, what, like the first night? Hey, Janelle, good morning. 
Uh, they announced this like right as Toy Fair started. I think the night before the first day of Toy Fair. So, and it as luck would have it, um, I, I was there at Toy Fair and we had an appointment with McFarland Toys on that first day. So we ran over there and they had um, they had a prototype on display and I got to take some pictures of it. Um, I shared those online as well as on figures.com and uh, it got a lot of attention, so that was cool. Yeah, this thing, uh, this thing is huge. It's kind of hard to show all of it on camera because it is it is so big yeah i i know i know there's cool stuff going on on the on the other channels i don't uh <laughs> it's fine it's all good uh it's got the 12 plus not because there are any tiny pieces although you can disassemble this pretty well but just because they don't want to pay safety ratings for having a younger age and i mean you don't need to promote <laughs> space marines to kids uh we've got the warhammer logo got some grim dark on the sides. Now this one is a is an unpainted version of a uh, standard ultramarine that already came out. So this one is technically the artist proof, which is kind of silly, but sure, it's an artist proof. Um, it is just gray. It's got a bolt rifle. Now what's interesting is so these were the first two releases. You've got a assault. That's interesting. They call it an assault intercessor. I think in the beginning they just called it a intercessor sergeant. But anyway, you got this dude with a pistol and chainsword. So this version here that I'm holding was the first place that you could get the actual bolt rifle with it. And then they have a Necron. Now they've already announced there are more figures in this line coming. There's a an intercessor, or not an intercessor, a primaris. Hellblaster and a Sister of Battle, which is really cool. While Bandai continues to make their own Space Marines, more $100 Space Marines from Japan in the form of an Imperial Fist and Salamander. So if you're into the really expensive ones, then you can get those from Japan. Uh, I'm not get, I'm not quite ready to paint this, but one day. All right, so get this. Out. So I'll do this like I do a a toy review. Pretty very very simple packaging. Interesting how they have to lay out the the parts because it is so big in the package. Uh, normally accessories would all be on the side or behind the figure, but here they're like, no, we just got to stick these things right in front just to cram it cram it all in. Uh, no, these are the unpainted version. There's no, there's no specific iconography on it. It's, it's pretty weighty. So he's in a plastic shell, which is actually bolted onto the cardboard backing, which is fun. So. Decent. Decent detail on this. I mean, it's huge. Yeah, use this as a knight. That's true. Uh, obviously, like one side gets more detail than the other. Um, typically, a lot of these are posed holding the rifle in front of him. So again, there's a side that essentially you're not going to see as much. Um, it's if you if you look at it straight, it's it's kind of bendy. Especially like man, that sight is is pretty crooked now are you gonna are you gonna notice when it's all together and the guy is holding it not really they actually drilled out the barrel some which is nice <laughs> now one thing that a lot of people so this has been out for a couple weeks now and already people have done just the most remarkable paint jobs on these things that you would ever imagine uh, but one thing that i've seen a lot of people talk about is mold lines so what's a mold line? Uh, when you have a toy, so toys are injection plastic molded for the most part. So there are two big pieces of a mold that are together. They squirt the hot plastic in between. It fills up the cavities. They open it up. They pop out the pieces. They build the toy. Uh, where those two molds meet, there's a seam. And there's a, there a tiny bit of plastic can get in that seam. So you'll see like running along the top. You see that line right there? So that is a mold line. 
generally, you know, you'll find these on toys. You'll find these on models. It, it varies depending on how big of a deal it is. Um, people have talked at length about on here. As modelers, we can't have mold lines. Uh, so if you're going to paint this, you want to get rid of all these mold lines first. And that one person, <laughs> one tutorial I saw on eBay said, or on uh, YouTube said he he spent an hour cleaning up just the mold lines on this figure and the accessories. Yikes. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to go to that level of, uh, of perfection on mine. Now, a lot of people have asked about, do you need to primer this figure? And I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. He sounds like he needs a hobby. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is just gray plastic. It is not painted. It is not primered. You can feel it is. It's just plastic. So yeah, if you want the paint to stick, you should primer it. And I'll talk more about that when I get the figure out. Again, I mean, the pieces are huge. Um, they've got nice bulky detail to it. But it's not the most, I mean, like, it's it's kind of soft. Like, these things just kind of poke out. And they're like these ridges. Again, there's, there's a mold line that runs right across the top of this all the way over. You can see, like, I don't know what you can see, but this this bottom piece. Uh, well, I don't know if that's gonna focus there, but anyway, um, so it's glued together and like it doesn't quite line up. So, yeah, what are you gonna do? Now again, the Bandai figure, a hundred dollars. This figure, same scale, same size, twenty dollars. So, I'm definitely gonna be more lenient as far as you know nitpicking things like that let's see if i can pop this guy out without having to oh no he's got plastic wrapped around his shoulders Sorry, loud. The most entertaining part of the stream when Scott fight, fights with uh, plastic. get all the rest out of and he's got an itty bitty base which will be helpful considering how heavy the bolt rifle is Very simple base doesn't really doesn't really matter. Hello, Emma. Good morning. Okay, so we have our. Now he stands pretty well on these <laughs> gigantic clunky feet. Now the proportions. Immediately you look at this thing, and it's definitely got Space Marine proportions, right? It's not a mini marine. It's not an old style marine, but he's got these just gigantic legs, and of course, the shoulder pads. Wouldn't be a space marine without enormous, freaking shoulder pads. 
I'm trying to get him to stand up as straight as possible. I'll do it. Get my trusty ruler. So he stands right about seven and a half inches tall. I believe they they talk about this guy being in the seven seven inch scale. Now scale when we talk about action figures is uh It's variable, let's put it that way. They'll often, like I said, they'll talk about action figures either as being just a, a, a stock size. So everything in, everything in a line is six inches tall or five inches tall. Um, or they'll have more, the better ones are, like I said, in, in a scale at a, at a certain height. So in a six inch scale, you'll have some figures that will only be five and a half inches for shorter characters or you know, six and a half inches for taller characters. And it's always nice when, again, there is a, a unified scale in a specific line, uh, which is actually pretty rare. So how does this stack up to some other figures? I don't have a lot of McFarlane toys. Um, back in the back in the day, I had a fair amount of the the spawn action figures. Um, especially the more weird ones. I liked some of those. I have this little Halo dude in Spawn colors. This was an exclusive from something a million years ago. Um, obviously, a smaller scale action figure <laughs> compared to this monstrosity. But I did grab some things that are a little bit closer in scale. So we have a Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim. That's a about the same height. I mean, obviously, you can see the the massive difference in heft to something like that. This is the first version NECA did. They did a couple versions later with more articulation, a lot more interchangeable parts. Let's get in. So here we have MCU Iron Patriot. And again, every, basically any action figure next to this guy is going to look really skinny and gangly just because of the extreme proportions, especially of the legs on this thing. Uh, Arsenal Roy, I actually don't have any of the uh, McFarland DC figures yet. I have my eye on a couple of them, but I don't... Uh, I haven't pulled the trigger. So here we have... Closer in scale, so we have T'Pol from Enterprise. She is almost the same height, actually. So, so again, seven-inch action figure versus the seven. I mean, it's it's hard to show exactly the scale here, but yeah, standing up with her big old helmet, she's almost the same height. Yeah, yeah, this guy is is big. Here's a Superman. And then I tried to find some some toys that are a little bit bigger, a little bit chunkier. So here we have a a NECA Predator, and I I'm pretty sure that this NECA Predator is also seven inch scale. Predators are massive, so you're gonna get again something taller than what the scale suggests. This was the Comic Con exclusive two years ago. I think they called it like. The pumpkin head version. I don't know. Okay, and then getting even bigger. My biggest sort of standard action figures. Got a very chunky Kilowog here, who is again just about the same size. Uh, this Kilowog is from a six-inch figure line, so he is massive in that scale. But again, getting. Closer to the the size and heft of this one. Um, Ed McGinnis loves his muscles, so here we have a Hawkman. <laughs> Hawkman's actually a bit bigger. Yeah, this is kind of a kind of a silly <laughs> silly one. And then uh, and then for the let's see the, the ultimate comparisons here we've got Green Lantern movie Kilowog which 
action figure. And then I think the, the biggest action figure I have that's not in like an actual 12 inch scale would be this ridiculous Hulk. So Sav Savage Hulk, I don't know. There's so many silly, silly Hulks out there. But yeah. So my intercessor does have some some people actually to look up to. <laughs> All right. So what does this so what does this thing do? Just coming out of the package, you can see it it's got some good articulation. The shoulder pads are they're articulated themselves, so they move around, which is very helpful when it comes to shoulder articulation. There's nothing worse in action figures than having some sort of a bulky part of the armor or the equipment that doesn't move on its own. So when you move trying to move that joint around, it gets stuck and you can't move it. It's it's basically it's a hindered articulation, which can really cut down on the the amount of fun you can have with the figure. So if you look inside the neck, there's a collar piece down below the head. And that's for the sort of the, the rocking back and forth. And then the head on top moves side to side. So it's not quite a ball joint, but it does give you a pretty good range of motion as far as you can kind of, you know, scowl and look down or you can look up pretty well. And then again, there's, you can move that head all the way around if you wanted. Space Marines can't do that typically. <laughs> uh, there is a ball joint in the shoulder. You can see it through there. Uh, obviously, he can't get that arm up too high because of the shoulder pad, but you know that's not too bad of a range of motion there. Uh, the chest plate does it does not come off. It is one solid piece up here in the upper torso. Now, what I'm I was going to talk about this in a minute, but I can talk about it now is so, like I said, there are people out there in the internet world who have already done amazing paint jobs on this thing. And what a lot of them has spent the most amount of time on is figuring out how to disassemble this. Because as you know, the professional painters would never just paint something that's already assembled. Uh, you need to do sub assemblies and paint every nook and cranny inside that you will never, ever see. Uh, so they figured out, and again, there are YouTube tutorials on this, but, um, a lot of these parts pop in and out like most modern action figures do again, so that it just cuts down on breakage when you assemble things in, uh, <laughs> they also need obvious. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean the feet, the lower legs, uh, I think you can remove the upper legs. You can remove the the waist, the arms, the just a lot of it. You do need to heat up the figure in order to safely remove a lot of those joints so they don't break. Uh, but you could just use a hair dryer, and that's enough to do it. I don't think I'm going to do that level of craziness. Um, I just I don't I don't I don't think I need to do that. But I do plan. I I have an idea that I will paint this thing one day. So it'll be fun. Yeah, uh, fun is, is a word for it. All right, so we have ball jointed shoulders. Again, the pad is does get in the way, but it does move, so it helps. Fun is, yeah. Uh, there's a bicep rotating joint, double jointed elbows, which is great. Um, there's not a lot of poses where you can actually get the full range out of those double joints there so they probably could have saved a little bit of money and made that one joint but it's nice that it's there i mean he can get all the way to like he can do he can do a nice oy vey pose get that hand all the way out uh these joints in here the double jointed in the elbows are ratcheting which are nice so they'll hold a pose especially once we start talking about how heavy this silly Bolt rifle is. <laughs> and then the hand. Let's see. The hand too, there it's it is ball jointed, but there's not really anywhere for it to go. It kind of just can't really move back and forth tucked in there. 
Um, he, let's see, can he face palm? Yeah. Yep, he sure can. <laughs> yeah, thanks to that double joint. So there you can see how, there, yeah, there's two joints in there to get that that good range of motion. Um, the, yeah, that's interesting. So the elbow pad is not loose like the shoulder pad. So if you just, if you hyperextend the, the first joint here, you are going to get a pretty good gap in between there. But yeah, what are you going to do? And again, like technically, if you, if you want all of these, if you want more extreme motion in all of these joints, you can shell out for the $100 Bandai version, which does have, you know, more of more loose, essentially more loose armor plates to get more of that motion. But yeah, what do you need? Uh, it does, this one does not come with any alternate hands, so he is going to always have this open, open hand. But again, it is good for holding the bolt rifle two-handed when we get to that in just a moment. All right, so we have all that. Same thing on the other arm. Hand is molded to hold the gun. So without it, it does look a little silly. Or you can give him something else to hold, I suppose. All right, getting back to the torso. There's a gigantic ball joint in the upper torso, which is has a really good range of motion. Um, if you want him to... <laughs> be crouching or sneaking or something at the waist there is what looks like yeah so there's another ball joint in the waist so he can like i mean you can get this guy leaning back really far from a standing pose he can twist in multiple ways so yeah it, there's there's a lot you can do with this and then similarly in the legs, so these these little thigh, these waist armor panels, uh, they are permanently attached. They're attached to the belt piece, uh, but they are flexible at least. So if you want those legs out, they'll move a little bit, but it's not like the shoulder pads that are actually on their own joint. So we have a ball joint at the hip, so you can get it pretty pretty high now because of the the just the heft of these legs there's not going to be as much articulation so there's for instance there's no uh, there's no thigh swivel which is a little bit unfortunate that's the only it's the only joint that feels like it's missing on this it would be good if you could twist this leg out without having to move the whole leg but again it's it's certainly acceptable the way it is. We have double jointed knee. So you can get that knee all the way back, which is pretty cool. Yeah, the posability on this thing is, it again, for as thick and heavy as he is, he can, he can, get, he can get in some good poses. You can definitely get him on like down on one knee, shooting poses. I mean, that, yeah, he'll definitely, definitely get down on one knee for sure. Yeah, he, he is, he is chunky. And then there's a little bit of an ankle, but again, because of how, how thick and sturdy all of this is, it's not going to move too much. <clears throat> and, then, and I love how on the bottom of the feet, he's got these teeny tiny holes on the bottom. So it's really only going to fit the base that comes with, or if you have, I mean, these holes are smaller than what you'd see on many three and three quarter inch figures. So yeah, you'd, you'd expect something bigger. Uh, we've got some copyright information as usual. GW 2020. I'm trying to read what the other one is. Whatever Todd McFarlane's code is. So yeah, it's got the standard armor as we've come to expect from the intercessors. Uh, pretty basic belt, and then a couple of pouches on the back, which are nice. Big gaping hole in the back, so you really can't display this without the backpack power plant. Although again, like why would you? Obviously, this just plugs right in. So 
Got the backpack on. That too will help with the weight of the gun counterbalancing when he's holding the bolt rifle. Yeah, because without it, I mean, he, he definitely wants to lean back a little bit. All right. The one thing I never like to do is try to get... I love accessories, but it's not always fun to get them into their hands. So let's see how much trouble this is going to be. This is another thing that's it's helpful if you have a hair dryer handy. It just loose. It just when you warm up the plastic, it just makes it much more malleable. Okay, there we go. Get his finger in there. Close enough. So on mine at least, that finger doesn't really fit inside the trigger guard. So I'm just going to put it underneath. It doesn't really matter. Now, hey Darrow, what do we got? My seven-year-old showed me, seven-year-old nephew showed me with pride the telephone he had just made from a string and two tin cans. Pulled in my iPhone and said, that's nice, but look at what kids your age made in China. <laughs> so yeah, so the bolt rifle is huge. I mean, if he is standing and holds it down, it will almost touch the ground next to him. It's very heavy. Now, can he hold it with one hand? Yes. Yes, he can. Um, I would not expect that joint to hold forever just because of how heavy it is. But he can do it. And again, with the weight of that backpack, he can even stand up and do it, no problem. Which is pretty cool. He can hold it up, which is nice. That's a pretty cool pose, actually. I like that one. Where he can be saying, Stop. We don't want you here. But then again, what I see a lot of people are doing is having him, ooh, it's kind of slipping out of his hand a little bit. He's doing the classic at attention pose, get that other flat hand to hold the bottom of the gun, like. Like so. And that looks pretty good. Can you give him a hammer? Yeah, I was, I'll, I'll admit, I was, I had plans if I had time and then I, I didn't, but I was going to go and raid my, like I said, my massive box of, of toy accessories and try to find some other things to give him, see if I have any lightsabers that are remotely in his scale and other weapons. But unfortunately I, I did run out of time to go and do that. But, uh, but yeah, that looks pretty good holding it like that. And then can you get it into more of a firing pose? Yeah, eh, not really, but at least, you know, it's close. So yeah, definitely, definitely a lot you can do with posing, even just standard stuff. Yeah, the $25 upgrade back. I mean, again, we know that there is, there is a uh, hell blaster on the way with, with the, with a plasma incinerator. So there will be other parts. Oh, and yes, I have seen already people have come up with uh, other things to, to put on this Marine, uh, especially the Bandai one, which again has been out longer. Uh, people are already 3D printing parts. They're figuring out what model parts are that you can use with this. I've seen them cut off the hands and use um, uh, power weapons and stuff uh, from knights. And yeah, it's it's crazy. So like I said, I'll go over as what people on the internet, what the hardcore hobbyists. So it's interesting, actually, the joint and the like the waist is kind of loose. If I let go, he just falls back. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, so typically what the hardcore 
hobbyists do when it comes to this is first they clean up all those mold lines now again you can see like if you look at this arm right here it's hard to see but there is a mold line that runs up across there mine's not too bad i've seen a couple of examples that are quite a bit worse uh, there are mold lines on the hands those are the most egregious really running down the back of the legs but they're not bad yeah actually that's pretty interesting the one the video tutorial that i saw his marine had mold lines that are much worse than than on mine it does run so it runs from here along the underside of this piece and down this way and then there's a little bit on the hand as well hmm. So anyway, first thing would be to clean up the mold lines, make sure all those are sanded down, flush to the body. Then the epic disassembling project. Then primering all the pieces. Then painting. Then reassembling. And again, like there, there are people who already have full tutorials on this. There's someone. There's one in particular. Um, I saved it, but. He did, he painted his as a white scars space marine and just the most amazing paint job ever. And talked about how, you know, like how to, how to assemble it once you've already painted it and what kind of varnish to use or not use. Because one of the big things you have to do is once you paint this, you do have to reassemble it. So you're going to be handling a, a lot to have to pop those joints back in. And then two, wherever you paint... So you have to be careful getting paint inside these joints because then it's going to be harder to put, to reassemble them. And then if you are going to be posing and moving once there's paint, it's going to be wearing and scraping the paint along the edges of those joints. So a lot to think about when you're doing it. Obviously, the ideal thing would be is to paint it, very carefully assemble it in the position that you want it to stay in, stick it on the base, put it in your display, and leave it alone. <laughs> Just enjoy the way it looks and don't mess with it. Uh, Darrow, so I I do have my Space Marine Army. It is it is currently unpainted. But I, I do sincerely want to finalize my paint scheme soon for my standard Space Marine Army. And then hopefully paint this guy the same way to match. I really hope that McFarlane eventually does some Chaos Space Marines. Maybe even an emperor's children. That would be amazing. But yeah. uh, Zarda, so yeah, you know what? I, I did start doing some tests on space orcas for my, for my space marines, but I, I think I'm going to go in a different direction. Uh, where is... Oh. So if you want to compare, here is a... Aw, so cute. So cute. Basically, I, I love the idea of my space orcas, but I just, I don't, I'm not excited about painting hundreds of miniatures in just black and white, essentially. And I don't think I'd be excited looking at them. So I'm going to find something else. He can hold his little, oh. <laughs> well, he would if I didn't knock it off the table. There we go. Oh, so he's holding it, but I should be able to. Yes. Aha. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. Or a blue one if you want to see some other detail. <laughs> yeah, now if you really wanted to get crazy, yes, of course you could do more customization. Um, if you wanted this to be a blood angel, like you could scour out the little the little skull here and make that into a blood drop. Um, you could add other little bits and pieces. 
I think I've seen I've seen somebody already working on a like a, a Space Wolves version. So adding pelts and little knickknacks and doodads around, which again on something this scale, pretty much you can just like find other stuff to add to it rather than really sculpting up all your own things. But um, but yeah, it's cool. I I am impressed. I was. I was not seriously considering getting one of these, but then Prime Day came along and it was just staring at me. We are we need some other stuff anyway, and I was like, oh. but a coupon for something. I was like, oh, you know what? This might be fun to have. Yeah, all right, cool. I like it. It's heavy. Ooh, okay, Dara. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll definitely see if there's anything. Thanks for stopping by, Emma. Have a great day. Everybody say goodbye to Emma. Yeah, I'm really impressed by the armor articulation, especially. It's funny. It mainly, mainly because of of that joint up in there. That's just it's just really well done all the way up inside there. So the shoulder pad covers it. Uh, it just makes it feel all the all the worse that there isn't one on the leg. <laughs> Because again, normally you'd have something up here on the leg so that it can not just turn here at the at the joint, but down here as well. Because again, like it can't turn in anymore. Which actually, here, let me get another. What's a good example? Well, it's a little bit unsightly on this one, but you can see that there's a ball joint inside. So like here, but then there's also the joint there so that's a separate joint but <laughs> it's so weird looking at a standard a standard action figure just looks so insanely emaciated and skinny after looking at that space marine for a while <laughs> i mean this is a a skinny action figure to begin with but in comparison it's it's really striking. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I will not be painting this to match the handful of Ultramarines toys I have. I am not a huge Ultramarines fan. They're fine, but uh, I'm not an Ultramarines guy. All right. Let's, let's look at something else. Oh yeah, and I do have my my beam me up, Scotty ruler that my father got me when I was I think like five years old this thing has been around forever it still works <laughs> dark angels forever ooh uh, yeah sure I, I'm not a big dark angels fan <laughs> I have friends who love dark angels it's no uh, no shade against dark angels but they're not for me Let's see. Ooh, one of these days, I want to talk more about terrain. No, I know. Oh, my God. Right now, if to play Dark Angels right now, Dark Angels are amazing um, until they get nerfed probably sooner rather than later. But, uh, yes, they're very, very good, very powerful right now in the meta. Um, I am always on the lookout for toys that I can incorporate somehow into my warhammer 40k hobby especially terrain and my son got something not too long ago and he's already stopped enjoying it but um i don't know how much i get to so this is some kind of i don't even know let's see it's an old matchbox eh, 2012 it's not that old so it's like matchbox city police department it's a little bit cringy with like these this cool cop watchtower thing i don't know hey rabbit wombat but um but yeah i mean like the second i saw this thing i was like oh oh this is gonna make some really good warhammer terrain <laughs> it, it has all like this goofy mechanism where it pops up or something but I'm, i'll just i'll stop that from happening just because i don't want because it's a little flimsy but um you know, it's got this little ramp here. 
another ramp over here. But yeah, I just gotta, I just gotta repaint it mainly, build it into something. Where are my, where are my Marines? But yeah, that's that's a pretty good, pretty good scale. Yeah, grim dark it up for sure. Hey, buddy. So I can so I can use it for my games. What do you think? Yeah, you you can play with it until I figure out exactly what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> Ooh, orchid, yeah. Yeah, you could definitely do some cool orc stuff with this. But anyway, so yeah, every every so often, uh, yeah, I'm always on the lookout for when my kids get tired of something, and it's like, hmm, what can I do with that? <laughs> You're not playing with it anymore. Oh, Pete, it's uh, it it's it's tough. We were so lucky. Benjamin had really excellent diction so early on, and with Max, it's tough. But yeah, it's we obviously we, we can understand a lot more than than other people. Um, Aridins, no, I don't. I don't think I. I don't think I saw that. I think I missed that. Uh, I was gonna open up some. Force Awakens Micro Machines. I mean, I am just on the cutting edge of what's new. So they released a bunch of these sets. I have, I mean, man, when these came out, I was so excited for the return of Micro Machines that I bought just like every single one of these. So I still have, still have some in the closet I just never gotten to. Uh, these multi-packs were cool though because each one of them came with something that was unique to the pack. Uh, although I think they went back on that anyway. Later on, they repackaged everything anyway. But I think at the time, this was the only way to get the little speeder. Um, maybe in the figures? I don't know. And then they did these really goofy ones. The Gold Series. And what does that mean? It means you get something that's just painted in gold. Why not? But this stretches back. This is a tradition that Micro Machines did all the way, 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 way back. Uh, the very first, when Micro Machines was doing Star Wars and Star Trek at the same time, which was crazy, uh, they had a lot of ships that they would also do in just flat metallic colors. Uh, Arsenal, I don't know if there are, I don't know if they've done commercials for the new Micro Machines. I don't remember seeing them. I mean, they should. <laughs> I, I hope they do. Oh, yeah, Puppets War has some really, really great stuff. Oh, interesting. So in this line, there were a couple of play sets. So they had some small play set. There's um, a Stormtrooper head, that oh, First Order Stormtrooper head that opens up and it has a little play set inside, which is pretty cool. So this thing was the biggest one, and it's the First Order Star Destroyer play set. So it opens up. It's got a bunch of room inside to do things. Uh, mount ships, have little people running around. So I, I, I have one of these in a box that I haven't opened, but my son had one of these and we had it open and we played with it. This thing is the biggest piece of crap. You open and close this thing five times and it just falls apart. Awful toy. Terrible, terrible toy. So upset. That's what it made me much less interested in opening mine. Although, of course, mine's just going to stay in spaceship mode and just sit on a shelf somewhere. But, uh, but yeah, that was that was a that was a bummer. Oh yeah, there's a uh, Millennium Falcon one. I don't think we have that one. But yeah, the Stormtrooper head one. We have a couple of those. Yeah, micro machines are freaking great. scissors although it was a bummer that none of the modern micro machines came with the little flight stands 
But thankfully, I have a whole bunch of them from the old days. Get these itty bitty teeny tiny figures. Which aren't really good for too much. But. So they did try to give us some variations. So obviously, now if you know your TIE Fighters, you know this is a new design that they made for Force Awakens. Here's an old style TIE Fighter, but we've got some snow detail, which is kind of cool. And I mean, that's, you know, that that's minimum effort as far as, you know, essentially dry brushing some white on, but you know, at least they tried, at least it's something different. Are they close to the same scale as X-Wing? They are a bit smaller, but hold on one second and I can show you in comparison. Not too far away. I know this is the, yeah. So they are a little bit smaller. Oh yeah, and even that, just, just slightly. So yeah, I mean, you could definitely proxy them as long as playing with cool people. So yeah, it's close. Close. I don't, yeah, I don't know exactly what the scale technically would be, but um, similar. This thing. Is this a design that wasn't in the movie? can't remember usually there's some stuff that makes it into the toys that then end up not being in the movie and it's like oh well at least we have a toy of it like constable zuvio yeah i think i think this was just in the like the previs stuff and this is this one specifically the Jakku set. Oh yeah, well, I was talking about the um, so the molds. So one thing I was really interested when these came out was to see if everything was new molds or if they reused any of the molds back from the original Micro Machines. And as far as the toys, now of course some of the some of the things are actually different vehicles. So like the, the new X-Wings are not the same shape as the old X-Wings. Uh, if you miss that at first glance, that's totally understandable. But the, the configuration of the engines is different. And also the wings, how they fit together. Uh, it is a different design for the X-Wing. Uh, so obviously those molds need to be new. But for especially for the Millennium Falcon, I was wondering if they reused any of the old molds and then just stuck a new... Um, uh, what should we call it? Dish on there. Uh, but no, all of the molds seem to be new, newly sculpted. So yeah, so this thing is just, just gold. Sure, why not? They did do X-Wings in both open wings and closed wings. These are all open here. So yeah, you'll see a lot of the same ships repeated in a lot of these multi packs. They did do they did do a, an expansive line actually in single single ship blind bags, and those had things from just all over the series. A lot of new vehicles, some old vehicles, um, ad ats, all sorts of different things. Yes, I call it an ad at. 
ATAT -AT if you're one of those people. Uh, this was probably the coolest thing though. The actual crashed, smashed up Star Destroyer from Jakku. So yeah, I was really excited to get this one. The color's a little bit off today, but those, in real life, those are a little bit more blue than green. <laughs> Ultra Man Spence. Uh, and again, they do all have the standard size hole for those old bases. So if you still have them around. AT&T. <laughs> I... ADAT is fine. And I know I still I, it's an ATST and an ADAT, but I don't have I don't suffer any cognitive dissonance from that. Uh, we have Ray on her junky Jakku speeder. Interestingly though, they made this one where she is uh, essentially she's bareheaded. She doesn't have her full on face covering scavenger garb. Which you usually see her uh, with in the movie. And yeah, these little tiny unhelmeted Kylo Ren. Yeah, like I said, I, I, I do have a bunch of these things. This, I believe this was the first gold version I opened, though. So, yeah. Man, I haven't played X-Wing in forever. Maybe one day. I don't have any of the the version 2 of the game. I have all the original stuff, which of course, you know, you can still play. It's Yeah, 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 exactly. We were just talking about that that the the sizes are close enough. It's not exactly, but um but it's close. Kind of surprisingly, actually. Obviously, though, when you get into larger scale things, though, then, then the scale completely falls apart. Uh, the Millennium Falcon for X-Wing is much bigger than this. But at least, yeah, for the fighters, for these fighters, you could use them. Which is nice because uh, these are very expensive. So, yeah, if you... Because each one of these packs comes with multiple tiles, so you could have different ones... I mean, of course, you could print out and make your own anything, but um, yeah, because the main thing would be you would need additional movement dials. But again, you could just write those down and and do it yourself. Yeah, I think you could probably. Oh, the um, yes. Yeah, I mean they don't they don't fit in snugly, but but it will definitely stay. On there. We. <laughs> but yeah, you could definitely do that. Which actually is interesting because if you wanted to really customize a ship or make you know make it battle damaged and chop it up. Uh, it would be far cheaper to do it to a... Hey, Pandar. Thank you so much for subscribing. Oh, and thank you so much for the K-pop... Ooh, emote there. Uh, yeah, so again, like if you if you wanted to really smash up a ship or customize it crazy, uh, it would be much cheaper to get a Micro Machines ship, do it to that, and then save your precious, very expensive actual X-Wing ship and, you know, leave that off to the side. So that'd be cool. I've definitely seen some people repaint these in, you know, their own crazy colors and things. These models are great. They've got a lot, a lot of very, very small detail. But they are not cheap. The first version of this X-Wing game, the rules are pretty much same mechanics, same rules as the Star Trek Attack Wing game that 
I mean, it was based off of the same rules. Uh, you may have seen that played here on this channel. Um, I taught Jessica how to play it one day. Uh, I, I prefer that game. I just think the mechanics work better for the the size and scale of Star Trek ships than for fighters like these. But, you know, it's it's acceptable. I have played a few games of X-Wing. Like I said, it's been quite a while. I would not be averse to playing that again, though. I haven't, I haven't, I did never play with the larger, the larger X-Wing ships to try that out. Yeah, Star Trek Attack Wing is, is, is fun. I really do like that game. Uh, they're, they do have a couple more products theoretically in the pipeline. So we'll, it's, it's not dead. Just, it's slow, slow to have new releases. Um, and especially this year, we're not. We're not criticizing anyone's release schedule for 2020. But yes. Uh, so the Battlestar Galactica is minigame. As you may have seen when I've done some unboxings of those, I haven't actually sat down to play it yet. Essentially, essentially though, it, it operates in very similar mechanics um, to X-Wing and Star Trek Attack Wing, with the exception in that they, it's much more complicated, especially if you use the full rules. So not only do you have a, essentially a, a, you select what type of maneuver you're going to make, but your specific vessel determines how fast you can go and you have to keep track of your speed um, because again, it works just like the show did. <laughs> the game works a little bit more in real life physics so once you set your speed, uh, you can your speed determines your maneuvers, what you have access to, and then you have stress. So if you try to change a maneuver too hard, it affects your ship. Um, and then you also have facings because again, even though you're traveling this way, uh, you your ship should be able to turn and shoot the other way, and you still retain your entire speed going this way. <laughs> So it just adds more of those kind of elements to it, which I'm sure, you know, could be fun as long as you are proficient with the rules. It looks like a game that unless until and unless you know the rules pretty well, it could be a little bit frustrating. But that would be a fun one to to do one day if I had if I had a guest on, we could work on learning learning that game but yeah so these will go into my huge shelf of Star Wars micro machines and other small scale ships this guy is probably just gonna sit around for a little while until I figure out exactly how I want to paint my space Marines And then one day I will paint him as well. Yes, sir. Because he will not look like these. Rabbit Wombat, that does not surprise me. There are a lot of people who really love X-Wing out there. I bet there are a lot of people still playing the, the original version too. I imagine not everybody has switched over to the, the newer one. Neat. <laughs> I know. I Well, this is only the McFarlane version. I don't have the Bandai version because I'm not going to spend $100 on it. I mean, if they wanted to send me one as a review sample, that would be that would be totally different. But uh, But, yeah. $20 Space Marine, $20 for this much plastic, this level of detail, uh, th th it, that's a solid buy right there, let me tell you. And again, even the, the painted ones are 20 bucks each. Hell, a lot of good, a lot of good quality four inch figures these days are $20. But $100 for this, no thank you. No thank you. No thank you. Everyone needs a rowboat, yeah. 
I mean, the the dream, of course, is that this line does really well for McFarlane. Uh, McFarlane has the the clout to push back on GW and say, "Hey, we want to make we want to make a bunch of characters, a bunch of races, and we get a really good line of you know an expansive, inclusive line of Warhammer action figures." I the only things I the only things that I can quote unquote reveal. So when we were at Toy Fair in February, we talked to all of the different companies about these toys. And of course they all said, yes, we have many more things in the works, many more things planned for these lines. Uh, the games workshop representative said pretty much flat out. You'll never see a toy based on old style Marines. They will only ever make toys based on Primaris Marines. So that's something not surprising, but that's something. Um, they did also say that they 100% have plans to do something from chaos in this figure line. Uh, again, whether they get to it is a question and what exactly it's going to be. That's another question. They said they want to do Xenos and they want to do actual characters, not just generic space Marines, generic Necrons. They want to do actual specific named characters in this line. So, again, whether or not any of those things actually comes true will depend on sales. <laughs> so, just like with everything else, if you want more of these, go out and buy, try to buy at least one. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, of course, you can paint it however you want. You can accessorize it however you want and just make your own. Uh, yes, Aerodens. Uh, Ultra Marines, they're okay. They're certainly okay. But, yeah, it'll, it, I mean... Again, it's so it's so weird this year, but like are these are the the painted versions are they on shelves at any store? I don't, maybe they might have them at Target or Walmart. Um I haven't been to a Target or Walmart since I guess the beginning of March. Uh <laughs> But yeah, I I wonder though if the if these were on shelves in a normal store um you know, do these have appeal to non Warhammer fans? You know, our kids are, you know, our, our teens who are into toys. Are there any teens into toys these days? I don't know. But are they looking at this kind of thing and being like, oh, that looks cool. I don't know what that's from, but that's a cool figure. I don't know. It's interesting to think about. Yeah. Cause especially coming into this year, Games Workshop just licensed the hell out of Warhammer. And there are a bunch of companies with the license. Um, some of the products have come out yet. Some haven't. And is is that going to make a difference for Warhammer popularity? Is it going to bring more people into the, into the tent? And I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Zardoz. I mean, yeah, definitely for people in some different situations. It's, it's been a while. Cool. Well, this was a lot of fun. Uh, definitely focusing more on one thing, but really giving it a good once over, seeing what it can do, how it looks. I will be back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Games Workshop. Oh, they're 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 hurting for it. They need the monies. Yeah, it's so fun. Oh man, does. <sighs> yes, Games Workshop is doing fine, but they do. Also want all the monies. Ah, there are all those people who are. We've talked about this before, but there's a there's a portion of the Warhammer community who are old and not cool. And man, anybody who who talks that garbage about that the whole go woke get broke thing, I I do not agree with that statement. I think that's a stupid statement. But um, they were saying that about Games Workshop. Oh, you know, they they have more inclusive stuff. They're saying, you know, we don't want you in the hobby if you're racist and all that. And then, oh, they're, they're going to lose all their sales, blah, 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 blah. And then Indominus comes out and it's the best-selling product they've ever had. And everything is selling through the roof. And 
So those people should just shut up and go away. They are not wanted here. What? Yeah, I definitely, I do like the posing on this guy. Do some cool stuff. So he's like this. Yeah, I did some, I actually recently did some research into like the um, Games Workshop's market reach and their the stock prices and stuff and it's uh it's it's staggering <laughs> that company's doing very well they're a, and they're a very very big fish in a pretty big and growing pond too any teens in chat general you uh you're gonna be clicking heads today <laughs> double team that's cool uh, yeah, so I, I'm going to wrap this up and I will be back tomorrow. Uh, I still haven't made it to my local store, but um, I, I'm going to try to get over there today 